Hi and hello everyone. Uh, in this video, we will be discussing drugs for cough. Now, when I talk about uh, cough, there are basically two types of cough we deal with. One is called as a dry cough and one is called as the productive cough. Now, what is the meaning of dry cough? Dry cough has no sputum production. So, dry cough has no sputum. Where do you see dry cough usually? In the upper respiratory tract infections, you see dry cough. Productive cough is a cough where you find sputum and usually the lower respiratory tract infections like pneumonia, bronchiectasis, they produce the mucus that is becoming a sputum. So, let us understand what are the drugs for dry cough and what are the drugs for the productive cough also called as wet cough. First, we will lead the understanding of dry cough. Dry cough, remember, should be suppressed. Now, the drugs which suppress the cough are called as antitussius. So, antitussius are nothing but the drugs which suppress the cough. And we have drugs called opioids. Opioids, the main action is in the brain. So, they suppress the cough. Most important drug is the drug called codeine. For codeine, if you add fol, it becomes fol codeine and a drug called levopropoxifen. So, let me repeat again. The drug name is codeine. If you add fol, it becomes fol codeine and levopropoxifen. Now, what is the drawback of codeine? What is the drawback of codeine? Codeine, if you give for dry cough, it becomes morphine in the brain. So, it is an opioid. So, most of the problem is if you give codeine, patient will start abusing the drug because codeine becomes morphine which will cause euphoria, pleasure to the patient. Second important drawback of codeine is it can cause sedation in the patient. And number three, the drug can produce, if you use it for very long period, the drug can produce a problem called constipation. Patient may develop constipation and if you give it at overdose, patient may go for a problem called respiratory depression. So, the breathing will become difficult, there is respiratory depression. So, there are four drawbacks of codeine. One is patient may abuse it. Second, it will produce sedation. Uh, it can cause constipation and respiratory depression. Because of all this drawback, if a baby or a child comes with dry cough, I cannot use codeine. So, codeine should not be used in children because of these problems. So, there is always a discovery for betterment. So, we came with another group of drugs for dry cough. Their name is NMDA antagonist. NMDA antagonist, the name of the drug is called dextroorphan. You remember as dextroorphan and add meth for that, then the name becomes dextromethorphan. Now, the main uh, mechanism of the drug is it is NMDA antagonist. Sir, what is the difference between the codeine and this drug? This has less abuse or no abuse at all, uh, less sedation and it will not produce constipation or respiratory depression. So, this is the best one to give in children. This is the best one to give. Then we have a local anesthetic. The local anesthetic name, if you read it, is it is called as benzonatate. The name is benzonatate. Benzonatate is a local anesthetic. So, when it is taken, it prevents or blocks the lung stretch receptors. So, whenever the stretch receptors in the lung gets activated, the cough will be there. So, that is suppressed by benzonatate. So, remember the name dextromethorphan and benzonatate. So, there was a question asked, can we use dextromethorphan and codeine together for dry cough so that we get more effect? Never. Because whatever drawbacks we had with codeine, that is why we came with dextromethorphan. So, never give this combination and this combination becomes irrational. The combination becomes uh, just a minute. The combination becomes irrational. So, never combine this because why did we come with dextromethorphan? To avoid that abuse potential, to avoid the sedation, constipation, and respiratory depression problem. So, that rationality will be lost. So, do not give them together. That was a question asked in one of the NEET PG and INICT exams. 
Moving on to the next type of cough that is called the productive cough. So, productive cough, there is sputum produced in the lungs. Sputum is nothing but it is the mucus which is there in the lungs. So, when there is mucus, mucus will not come out easily. Mucus becomes thick. When it becomes thick, it is very difficult to remove it. So, what we use is a group of drugs called mucolytics. So, mucolytics are the drugs which will make the thick mucus or the sputum which is thick into thin watery secretions. So, it will make it thin watery mucus. So, that is the reason why we use mucolytics so that they can come out of the lungs. Sir, what are the mucolytics I should know? Remember A, B and C drugs which are mucolytics. Sir, what is A for? A stands for a drug by the name Ambroxol. The name is Ambroxol. So, read Ambro sir. I am a bro. But this bro has one more brother. His name is Brome. His name is Brome and he acts excessively hexin. The name is Brome hexin. And C stands for drugs ending with cysteine. There are two drugs which end with cysteine. If you want to know their name, the name is called carbocysteine and one more drug is called acetylcysteine. Remember, these are also mucolytic drugs. So, A, B, C, Am, Broxol, Brom, Hexin and two cysteine drugs, acetylcysteine and carbocysteine. Now, if you remember in paracetamol, we discussed a drug called acetylcysteine. Acetylcysteine is also an antidote for paracetamol overdose. So, these are mucolytic drugs. If the sputum is very thick, not coming out, then we use this mucolytics. There is one more concept if you read, they are called as expectorants. Now, what is the meaning of expectorant? Expectorant is a drug which increases the cough and throws the sputum out. So, the name expectorant means it increases the cough and throws the sputum out. So, a commonly used drug is called guaifenesin. The name is called guaifenesin. Guaifenesin. So, these are drugs used for the productive cough where we find sputum. So, we understood the drugs for dry cough and the drugs for productive cough. Now, once we understand the drugs, it is important what is high yielding I need to remember. Let us revise it. What is the NMD antagonist used in dry cough? Anybody? The name start with dextro and ends with orphan. So, what is the drug name? It is called dextromethorphan. It is an NMD antagonist used in dry cough. Why dextromethorphan is preferred over codeine as antitussive? Why do we prefer dextromethorphan over codeine? I told you, let us repeat again. Number one, there is no abuse with the drug. So, patient will not abuse the drug because it is not an opioid. Even though it is derived from opioid, it is not an opioid. Then, no sedation compared to the codeine. Second, no respiratory depression, no respiratory depression and no constipation. And one more advantage, you can use this dextromethorphan in children also. So, that is the advantage. Then the next thing is codeine plus dextromethorphan combination is rational or irrational. We have discussed this. The codeine and dextromethorphan combination is irrational one. Levoproxifen is used for dry cough, true or false? Just pause the video and tell me. Yes, levoproxifen is used in dry cough, true. That question had appeared in one of the INACT pattern of exams. Moving on to another logical, rational question, why antitussives are not used in productive cough? Now, why antitussives? What are antitussives? They are the drugs which suppress the cough. Why suppressing a cough? should not be done in productive cough. Now, what is productive cough? The productive cough means there is sputum. Now, when the lung is having sputum, if I use antitussius, they suppress the cough. Now, what happens if you suppress the cough? The sputum will not come out. They stay inside the lung. The infection may flare up. 
So, because of that reason, the antitrust use are not used in productive cough. Cough with tenacious white sputum, mucolytic like bromexin is used. Is it true or false? A patient comes with very thick sputum, whitish sputum, particularly in COPD and all, you see that. So, can I use bromexin? Yes, true. Why, sir? Because bromexin is a mucolytic which will make that thick sputum into thin watery secretion and it will come out. So, it is a true statement. So, with this video, we understood what the drugs for cough, even though topic is very small, sometimes these questions are going to come in your competitive exams. Thank you all. All the best. Thank you.